Yo, 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 what's going on? Thanks for clicking on our YouTube chat with James Reed. This was a fun one. I got up very early. He stayed up very late. We were worlds apart, but we made it happen for you, the fans. He's going to take all of your fan questions in just a matter of moments. But first, I would like to thank you personally from me to you and Banjo. I'll speak for Banjo on this one for supporting us on YouTube. We're just starting out. We're trying our best, trying to figure out what the best content is to bring you. And if you could like this video, it's very appreciated. Subscribing is always awesome turning on those bell notifications and comments too, leaving your thoughts, favorite part, who you want to see next on our YouTube channel. All that is great. Without further ado, here's our exclusive chat with James Reed. All right, this is a very exciting interview we've got coming to you today. This is uh, an artist who has been highly requested, top requested on MTV for months and months now. Uh, just dropped a brand new fantastic single called Soda, and he joins us today on YouTube to take your fan questions. Please welcome James Reed. Yo, what's up everyone? Thanks for having me, man. Of course, and congratulations. We were just talking before we started rolling on uh, all the great things that are happening with this song and how special it is. And you're, you know, a lot of things are happening that haven't happened before. So we'll talk about all of it uh, through the fan questions. The first one comes from at Arlen Bum. And uh, actually, this is a cool question. What first got you into music? I, I think everyone just like loves music at one point in their life. Um, but I guess what got me into making music, um, Man, I think the first time I ever made any music was probably like my first cell phone. You know, you could make ringtones and I would make, you know, like my own ringtones on, uh, or I'd recreate songs just using that, like, uh, you know, the, the ringtone thing on the phone. And then from there I moved to like garage bands and then started, you know, just messing around. Yeah, it's almost like early beat making. Yeah, I guess. You know, that's, yeah. that's really interesting. Man. Man, that's so long ago. At Lady Luster 08 and uh, many others have asked, what is the meaning of the night nine white titles that you posted on your Instagram? Okay, that means absolutely nothing. Actually, a lot of people have been asking me that as well. <laughs> um, my marketing team was just like, yo, we got to clean up your feed before we start posting all this stuff. So let's just post nine titles. And it was just for the purpose of cleaning up the feed. And then, I don't know, it got more hype than I expected, which is a good thing, I guess. It, is, it shows interest, right? You probably yeah, sneeze. I looked too much into it. Yeah. I was just gonna, you, you could probably sneeze and the fans would think it was like an Easter egg hint at something. <laughs> you know I mean? um, all right. The next one comes from at uh, Jing X Rotil. What is the uh, most fun, most challenging thing about being an owner of a music label? For those that don't know, of course, you, you own your own label, Careless. Yeah, uh, Careless. Um, it's an independent music label uh, since 2019. Um, I, the most fun part is like, I, I get to work with my friends. You know, we built this, this label. Um, you know, it just started out as friends wanting to make our own music um, in our own way. You know, I, I went independent because I just wanted to have creative control. And I guess that's the, base, the best part is that, uh, you know, we get to make music on, on our terms. Um, the hardest part is probably actually being the owner of a music label. <laughs> it can be mad stressful sometimes, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's worth it. Um, it's, it's taught me a lot as well. Yeah. I can imagine take the good with the bad there. At Glowing Lustrous, is there a chance you'll be collaborating with any other artists in the future? Oh, definitely. Uh, that, that's like a lot of artists that I want to collaborate with um, here in the Philippines and also, you know, in in the States. Like I've started uh, working with TA, Transparent Arts. Uh, they're co-managing me from out, from out in LA and uh, we have some big things lined up and uh, they're helping me link up with other producers and, and writers and just kind of see what's possible, like kind of building a bridge um, between LA and the Philippines. Yeah, which is kind of pioneering in a lot of ways. Um, yes. Do you notice a big difference between, you know, whether it's producers and writers or just the music industry overall dealing with, you know, the LA team and, and the team uh, at home? So far, I haven't had enough experience, but it's it's been different. Usually here, we um, you know produce a lot of our stuff in house. We've we have worked with a bunch of different producers for for our projects, but that that just happens. Like there seems to be like a, a lack of people that are like hungry to get into like music production. And unlike unlike the states, like this, it's uh you know there's a surplus of music um, creatives, and I just feel like um, there's a lot that like we can do for each other 
you know, if we could collaborate, you know, and the Philippines, you know, desperately needs, you know, help from the outside, just so mm-hmm. we can get to another level. Yeah, no, absolutely. And bring two different cultures, two different sides of the world together, I think. Um, Definitely. We've even seen that on the Friday live stream show where that was the MTV show where you're very popular and very top requested to request show. It's been just cool to host that thing because it's opened my eyes to how big the world is and how much is going on in the world of music, you know? I was I was totally ignorant to like, you know, uh, Filipino artists and, and the whole scene. So it's cool to bridge, bridge those two things together. Yeah, the Philippines is a beast. So we're like, I think like one of the top uh, social media users in the world. Yeah. Whole untapped market here. Yeah, or even like I find it fascinating to go to like a Spotify and just like check out like the top 50 in the Philippines, you know? Mm-hmm. It's really cool and a very eclectic taste. I think that's something that like maybe, you know, uh, people out West wouldn't wouldn't know or realize, but you know, it's like, I was just talking to an artist yesterday, Pink Sweats, kind of like an R&B artist. I don't know if you ever heard his music, but he's like, yeah. you know, top 10 in the Philippines right now. And he's just, yeah. you know, an R&B singer from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania here in the States. You'd never think it, but it's cool. All right, the next question, at Love Psyche, what is the most random thing, event, that inspired you to write a song or a verse? Not to steal or thunder, but like, what's, what does inspire you? Like, does anything just like, I remember talking to an artist named Nash one time, and like the flickering of his oven, like inspired uh, like a hi-hat sound on a song. And so it's like, is there anything random or odd where you just like, I don't know, a word your friend said, or just something, seemingly inconsequential that led to you thinking of a song um okay actually like literally for the song that i just released soda um when i was making the beat uh there was no lyrics on it i just made the the beat and i did i had to save it and then when you save it you have to give it a name and uh just popped into my head soda i don't know why it was like something about the the track that just made me think you know it was something just like refreshing and i was just like soda fine i'll call it soda and then later on, when I started working on the beat some more, uh, I just, because the, the, the song was called Soda, I was like, you know what, I'll put in like, you know, the sound it makes when you crack open yeah. a can oh, of soda. Totally. I use that as like a, uh, like a transitioning sound, you know, before the beat drops. It's awesome. And it's a, that's such a satisfying sound. You know? It is a satisfying it sound. Make, yeah. It makes you like feel really good for some reason. Yeah, yeah. I use it right before the drop and it just, it hits so good. So good. All right, moving on here, add Don't Tell Mel. Uh, what is something you've done or learned while in quarantine? I don't know, I've, I've learned a lot during quarantine, to be honest. I've learned how to be an adult, basically. <laughs> it's really forced me to like grow up, um, you know, made me focus on things that are really important. And, you know, that that's really helped me take this whole music thing and the label thing to, you know, another level that it wasn't before. Cause, you know, it just kind of cut out all the bullshit and I was able to focus on you know what's really important what do I actually have to do to get to where I want to be that was sort of the silver lining of this all right is that the th- we probably need if we talk to ourselves a year ago there are probably so many things we thought we needed right in our life that were taken away from us and we go well, we're still here you know we're still happy and it kind of it got us a lot more focused and it led to I like that you kind of converted that into music and then with the label because when, when everything stopped we were kind of like okay what am I actually doing when, when you cut out all the going out and then the you know all the downtime and all, sorry, all you have is downtime it's like what am I actually doing what is my actual goal you know what is and my I, actual purpose speaking of the, the, the label and the business uh, at Florida what is your goal for careless music this year just release a lot of music man <laughs> That's that's really the goal. Uh, we've always taken so long to release music, and it's because we're just a small team, you know. And um, for example, last year, you know, given all the restrictions, um, we were only able to release one project, and that was Nadine's project. Um, she released a full album, and we created a, a visual album too. So for six songs in the track, it was like a whole visual album experience, and uh, it was intense, but. Um, we're only able to release one project and this year our goal is to release projects, you know, singles, albums, EPs for all the different artists that are under the label, including a new artist. Oh, nice. and, uh, that's exciting. Anything you can yeah. talk about now or too early? Um, we're releasing a new artist. She's coming out in you know the next couple of months and uh, she's extremely talented. So we've been really looking for talent, you know, also outside of Manila. You know, there's so much 
there's so much talent out there in the Philippines and, you know, a lot of them just don't have the platform or, you know, the connections to really get their sound out or get discovered. So um, our a and uh, Brett Jackson, you know, he's been, you know, scouring like all the music that's being released in the Philippines and finding these really cool artists that are really young and talented. So we're really excited for uh, our upcoming artists. That's awesome. It's very exciting. Um, congratulations too. Thank you. Um, at JDNX says, can we expect collaborations with you and other artists from Transparent Art? And please do share how that happened, how you got in touch with them and all. Definitely. Um, I met I met Verman. He's from uh, Far East Movement and uh, he's Filipino. So naturally he uh, he came to the Philippines and he was you know looking for people to work with. And uh, I got introduced to him. He told me like, yo, just, just come out to LA, just, just meet some people. And like, I promise you, you'll start looking at things differently. I head out there, you know, I, I got to visit a few studios and just kind of open my eyes to, you know, how different the, the music production scene is in, in the States um, compared to the Philippines. And um, I just saw a lot of opportunities and, you know, they're really great people. And, you know, he, he also wants to help build that bridge, you know, for the Philippines to be able to make it to the international stage. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That you guys have that friendship and that connection. At James X Robert, how do you see the growth of your label now uh, from before when you first started it? B basically, before there was like no growth. <laughs> now there's growth. That's like the biggest difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now there uh -huh. is growth. <laughs> Yeah, we at the start, we were more focused on like these collaborative projects. Like um, when I started Kellis, we did a Kellis mixtape. So um, it was basically all our artists together on this one project. And, and I, I loved it. it. It was fun to make because, you know, you're not just focused on creating a whole, a whole album for yourself. It's really collaborative and you get to mess around with different sounds. And it was a lot of fun. But also we just didn't have the capacity to be able to make, you know, solo projects and music videos for everybody but uh you know we've gotten to a point where we've had you know quite a few successful projects and um we're really able to give like our artists all the tools they need to be able to make their own music and to uh, also like monetize off their music in more ways than just streaming like through a lot of their content especially during quarantine like like the gigs are out like that was our like main source of money and they were gone. So we had to change the whole business model to like making content, working with sponsors and brands and things like that. Yeah, it's been quite the, uh, the challenge and the journey. It kind of, uh, it's a really nice segue to the next band question actually. It comes from uh, AoJ Day and uh, they want to know, James, when the pandemic started and lockdowns happened, what were your biggest worries, fears and how did you deal with them? Pretty much that I just didn't, like honestly, when it happened, it was, I thought it was going to be like, Okay, two weeks and we're good. Right. Yeah, then we all two week vacation, I'll just get to chill at home, play video games and just relax for a minute and then it just kept going. And I think the scariest part was that it was just so uncertain. Like no one knew what was going to happen. Uh I had no idea what I was going to do with like the music and the label. Like, am I gonna have to take it out back and shoot it or is this gonna still work? I guess we kind of just all naturally grouped together and you know everyone was in survival mode you know it was a difficult time for everyone you know it suddenly like everyone was like suddenly you know insecure you know in terms of work and we just like banded together put our heads together figured out you know what can we do we're just lucky that thing, things worked out and um you know we can still and we're really lucky that we can still do something that we love like we're still able to work on music we were able to make some really dope content for so some strange reason you know it worked out like better than probably if the pandemic never happened yeah it's funny looking back like that and, and yeah it's like damn did we need that or like what's going yeah, on yeah right you know with this thing that, <laughs> this thing that we've like told ourselves is you know like you know stopping us from doing all these things it's, it's actually allowing us to do quite a bit as well exactly uh, internally at February 11th underscore wants to know, how would you say you've improved as a musician producer since the last time you released music? Is there anything you uh, you achieved on Soda that you were uh, you know particularly proud of that maybe you weren't able to in the past? Well, I mean, Soda was the first track I released that I produced myself, you know, just like with literally this MIDI keyboard 
and uh, yeah, using Logic. You know, every, the whole team liked it, and they were like, "Yo, let's let's finish this this track." So I got some uh, instrumentalists, and they put in some live guitars, some live bass. Yeah, I'm particularly proud of this one because you know, from the beginning to the end, like I basically produced uh, most of the song, which is a first for me. But I don't know, my process changes so much with every project that we work on. So it's really hard to gauge, but yeah. At Potato, if you could have three magical wishes, what would they be and why? Uh, three magical wishes? First, we bring back live gigs, yeah. like physical live performances. That would be amazing. It's super awkward, like performing, like you're doing a concert. I did a digital concert and it's super awkward and there's no audience. You kind of have to pretend that there's no audience. Oh, it's gotta be like the hardest thing, right? Like when I see artists, it's kind of like, weird. let me hear you. It's like, who are you talking to? You yeah. know what I mean? It must be like, just so odd. Exactly. You gotta do that, you know? Like you gotta keep the energy up. My other two wishes, I don't know, for the world to chill out for a sec. You know, everyone just, um, there's a lot of crazy shit going on right now, just the world to chill out and, you know, for the whole pandemic to end so we can go back to normal. I'm excited to see what the new normal is going to be like, you know, how we grew out of this. Hopefully you don't just like slide back into 2019. Right. You got a third one? Are those, are those three wishes? I think there are two, but I always think you should use one of the wishes for just unlimited wishes. Okay, I'll go with that. <laughs> That'd be my first wish. All right, a couple more here, just two more, and then we'll uh, we'll let you go. At Aya Bay B, of all the jobs you have now, what job is your favorite, and which one would you say is most important? I would say uh, me as a as as like as a member of like a family. You know, we have a very like tight group here, and like we're basically like a family. And uh, you know, me as like a as a brother or a son or as a friend in the, in the group that we have. I think that's really the most important role because I mean, if we don't take care of that, then there's really no point in me doing any of this. You know, the whole reason why I started doing it in the first place was so I could, you know, do something that I love doing, you know, with, you know, with my friends and family, so. Yeah, and not losing sight of that. Not cheesy. No, not at all. I think, that's, <laughs> I think that's your head's in the right place. And then uh, the final question is something we've actually probably already touched on, but uh, there's a new spin on it. Um, at Telemonsi says, uh, will there be any new members of Careless in the future? You've of course told us that there is a new artist coming. Yes, there will be. And hopefully by the end of the year, I'll also sign a few more. We're trying to build this like uh, artist training program where, you know, we can get artists you know, out here from different parts of the Philippines and, you know, we can give them uh, training and like vocal lessons and dancing and, uh, you know, even like music tech and theory. Yeah, well, hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have signed uh, a few more artists, yeah. And then this person just wanted to know, how do you scout new talents? Of course, you have a great a and it sounds like, that goes to other areas, but um, is there anything you particularly look for in talent? Basically, all we look for is people that, I think the number one thing is like artists that can write their own songs. Um, I don't know, they're just a different kind of artist. They, uh, they have so much more to tell and also, at the same time, I don't want to be writing everyone's songs. So, <laughs> um, yeah, we, we look for artists that have their own like distinct sound and that write their own music. And yeah, it really doesn't matter where in the Philippines they're from. That's awesome. Well, James, dude, thanks so much for staying up late with us here. Of course, we're celebrating the new single, no Soda. And uh, we'll talk again, actually, very soon. <laughs> but but yeah. it, was, it was good meeting you, dude, after uh, all this time. And thanks for doing it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks again. Awesome, man. I'm clapping for James, not me. I'm not, I'm not that narcissistic. Thank you, James, for the time. Thank you for the insight. Thank you for the music. First of all, Soda, great song, very cool song. And uh, as he told us there, there's more music on the way this year between him and uh, everybody over at Careless. So we're very excited to see what they have in store. Leave me a comment down below on this video. Let me know what your favorite part of the interview was. Maybe you had a particular favorite answer or moment that uh, James and I shared in that chat. Uh, please, we'd love to hear it. Also, liking this video is awesome. If you could subscribe to this channel and those bell notifications, please turn them on so you never miss another upload. Until next time, I'm Kevin Kenny, he's Banjo, he's sleeping, you know who you are, and we'll talk to you soon.